Maido. Hi there, Japan fans. On today's show, we're going to talk about the pitfalls of glibness. Present o Master Shimasho. This is the fifth year of the Presentation Japan Series podcast. We are beaming around the world to you from sunny Minato-ku in Tokyo. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, your corporate coaching and training guy committed to your success, the president of Dale Carnegie Training Tokyo, Japan, and the three-time best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery. My new book in Japanese, Za Eigyo, is now available on Amazon. Become a better speaker who is clear, confident, persuasive, and highly influential at those around you. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn, but we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Libsyn, who, unlike many other podcast hosts, have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on iTunes. Mondays, the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Tuesdays, the Presentations Japan Series. Every second Tuesday, the Business of Tatsujin no Oshie Show. Wednesdays, the Sales Japan Series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan Series. Every second Thursday, the Business of Pro Podcast Show. Fridays, the Japan Business Master Show. And Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews. This is episode number 286, 286, and today we're talking about overly glib speakers trigger rejection. It is a tricky balance to be clear, concise, articulate, and also plausible. I was thinking about a podcast interview I heard by a titan of industry. He'd obviously been trained in how to handle the media. So as soon as he spied the microphone, he went into media interviews 101 mode. Media interviews by their very nature are a fake environment. Those being interviewed are taught to be glib, keep it short, think in soundbite terms, don't reveal too much or you will get yourself into trouble. Many journalists are looking for a scoop, a chink in the corporate armor, a gotcha moment. You may come away from the interview with the gold still in your teeth and relatively unscathed, but how did you come across to the audience? We don't sound authentic. Well, this is entirely natural. You're under siege. So forget about authenticity and focus instead on survival. We don't sound conversational because we're avoiding conversation and trying to chop our thoughts up into media bites, bite-sized pieces. We're always aware that unscrupulous editors can rearrange our comments with a later recorded overlay that makes us look bad. There's a lot going on in the mind when being interviewed. Here's a little word to the wise. If you are ever being interviewed by the media, whether it is audio or video, always assume the camera or audio recorder is still rolling when the journo says, thank you, that is the end of the interview. They have learnt from experience that this is when we relax and they get us to make an offhand, untoward comment which we will make in haste and later regret at leisure. This offering gives the interviewer a big score and big kudos from their boss and journal colleagues back at the headquarters. The interview I referred to earlier started out wound up like a tight spring. The corporate titan's propaganda blitz on the worthiness of the company came across as a total fizzer. Pumping out the party line is a dud in these interviews. Trying to make the firm look good in an obvious self-congratulatory way is self-defeating. 
begins to sound like the type of drivel a lot of people posing as PR types try to foist on us to get us to like the company. Fortunately, finally, the interviewee realized this wasn't a gotcha media-style interview and just a humble podcast seeking insights. Once he relaxed, the entire line of the conversation moved from fake to real. You could literally spot the transition point, the quality of the answers, the elongation of responses, and the credibility of the speaker all lifted. Find out more when we come back from the break. Our show today is brought to you by our public programs, but we also do custom-made in-house classes. Now, we do them in our super safe classroom, we do them live online, and we do them in Japanese, and we do them in English. Okay, our show today <clears throat> is being brought to you by, on the 23rd of April, we'll have our professional ongoing education series. On the 13th of May, we'll have our course previews. And on the 18th of May, we'll have our Dale Cunningham course. Check out our website at www.dale, D-A-L-E, hyphen, Carnegie, C-A-R-N-E-G-I-E, dot, C-O, dot, J-P. Lots and lots of value for you there. Now, to do better in Japan, email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. Get my best-selling books, Japan Sales Mastery, that's the Bible for selling in Japan, and Japan Business Mastery, and my new book, Japan Presentations Mastery. If you like learning by watching videos, there are over a thousand there for you at Tokyo Japan Dale Carnegie TV on YouTube. We release three TV shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, which is the premier business show in Japan, comes out Mondays. Fridays, the Japan Business Mastery Show. And Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews for interview leaders in Japan from SMEs all the way up to the corporate captains of industry on one topic, leading in Japan. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro TV Show. Don't forget... You can email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. Welcome back. It was almost as if there were two people being interviewed, the fake and the real. We have to be clever with interviews and work out who is the audience. What is the interviewer's form from past interviews and understand how we can add value to the conversation in a relaxed and natural manner? We want to connect with and engage the listeners. We try to be too smart, too smarmy. We will trigger warning signals in the minds of our listeners. We've all been trained to be wary of the smooth-talking con man. And any time we hear something that smacks of that effort, we become uneasy about the person and what we are hearing. Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, is infamous for dropping in very erudite, learned words into his speeches. He went to Eton College and Oxford University. So he is very well educated. And he doesn't brook from flouting that fact. He also drops a big word. And then, as a throwaway remark, says, look it up, to acknowledge that he knows he's using vocabulary which is beyond the understanding of his audience, and he does it in a humorous way to reduce the rejection facet. I always feel undereducated about my English ability. So I've bought a number of his books because they are positively brimming 
with vocabulary which is rare or entirely new to me in a desperate effort to expand my vocabulary range. The point is, Boris somehow manages to get away with it, but for the rest of us, let's do our best to be clear without being glib. Let's be concise without masking our valuable thoughts. Let's strive to be articulate and do so in order to add value rather than to come across as a smarty pants. If we deem the interview to be safe, then let's relax during the interaction and try to connect with the audience in a way they will appreciate. Explaining complex ideas or information in a simple manner requires a certain level of genius, and this is what we should be striving to achieve. Let's drop the corporate doublespeak and be authentic in our revelations about the contributions our company makes to the world. Thank you for joining the Presentation Japan series. If you got value from today's show, spread the love around and share it with your family, friends, and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Immediately apply what you have learned today, use it, and go out there and become a presentations legend. Remember, I'm your corporate coaching and training guy in your corner, committed to your success here in Nippon.